Hey everyone, this is Arman Malik. I'm an Indian singer-songwriter and I'm chatting here with Rob on Front Row Live. Congratulations with this new single. Um, as I had mentioned to Sam once I heard it, I was starting to swoon over your voice. I, you know, like this, your voice is uh, so incredible and it's so crazy how different it is from all the other uh, songs and tracks that you do and then you bring the English music and I feel like your voice, your falsettos and your vocal ranges kind of go even higher. Um, can you talk to me about kind of that transition uh, of going into English music and kind of rediscovering your voice as an English artist? Um, actually, it's it's uh, really cool that you asked me that question. I always knew I had this kind of voice when I sang in English. It's just that the world is getting to know it now. <laughs> um, I've been singing in Bollywood uh, for almost now um, 13 years and it's uh, it's been a crazy ride here in India. And for me, uh, English music has always been my passion, um, especially pop and R&B music. That's the kind of stuff that I really love doing. And just putting music out in English and, uh, you know, letting the world know that, uh, especially my fans who know how I sing in Hindi, to know uh, that there's this side of mine uh, that exists and is uh, has existed all this while. It's just that I've not been able to put it out there. Uh, but I'm glad that, you know, I've been putting out singles like Control, Next to Me, How Many, um, the one with Eric Nam and Kashmir, Echo, and now the new one, You. So this is my fifth single, but my fourth solo single. And I, um, I, I'm really glad that I'm able to experiment with my tone and voice in almost all these songs. Um, I think that just stems from the kind of singer I am because I sing in multiple languages uh, in India. And uh, I'm you know asked to switch between different pronunciations, vibes, styles, genres. So um, I've never been boxed up in just one kind of singing. And uh, I think that's probably, uh, you know, my USP as an artist. I feel like that's something that is my strength, that I, I'm able to kind of like do different stuff. So I don't want to limit myself ever, which is why when you hear a control, you also hear a you. And, uh, you know, it's two different vibes, but I love doing that. As a songwriter, when you are writing music in so many different languages, do you feel like each each language translates uh, appropriately? Or do you feel like you have to change the way that you write be, uh, because of whichever language you're writing for? Um, so not necessarily that I uh, understand and speak in all those languages that I sing in. Uh, but there is a certain kind of intonation and enunciation and pronunciation that is there existing in different languages, the different kinds of um, uh, way the tongue needs to roll while I'm saying certain words. Uh, not a lot of people will, uh, you know, know that because it's not common knowledge. But um, uh, I've been doing it in the recording studio for quite some time now. So I'm just used to it. Uh, but it is it is quite a drill. And um, if you're not used to it, it, it can be uh, that really, really tough examination that you think you're going to fail. <laughs> um, it, it is uh, it is it is really tough. It's technical. It's uh, it's got a lot to do with um, you know just understanding how that language needs to be treated and sung because every language, be it Spanish, English, Arabic, it has its own DNA. And uh, for me, my main goal is to make sure that whenever I sing in a language which is not my mother tongue or my home language. Um, to try to sing it as native as I can, uh, so that the people in that language don't differentiate my voice from their usual artists. And that's something that I always make sure that I do. And that was one of the main things that caught my attention uh, with your English music, that you do sound like it's your native tongue. It doesn't sound like you're stepping out of your comfort zone. Um, in saying that, like the team that you have, that you've been collaborating with uh, in your production for your English music, like, how would you say that they help you become a better singer and being able to enunciate a lot more uh, with your with your lyrics? So a lot of times I do uh, vocal dubs and just send them the tracks and I keep asking them, am I sounding right? Uh, have I pronounced this word correctly? Um, and that's literally my my questions to them. And I have uh, this writer that I really collaborate with a lot and her name is Natanya. 
um she's indian and she's based in la so uh, i think she's the one who really really truly understands um you know me and my voice and the kind of stuff that would really really suit me and uh, we try to navigate uh, all our songs in that manner uh, just to make sure that you know when i sing in english it it sounds a certain way it's it's perfect in the way that we envision it and uh, i'm i'm always making sure that my pronunciation and enunciation is on point <laughs> because i i want it to sound native and that's something that i've always strive to do being a multi lingual singer that's one thing that uh, is always on my radar to make sure that when someone hears this song they don't feel jumped you know that okay that's that's something that i uh, you know i didn't expect that word to be sung in this manner uh, but yes when it comes to my singing and my intonation i do try to bring my indian influences um there are many places in control in echo that i've done certain indian runs that are very uh you know um specific to indian singing so i try to push push that in as well so that this there's my culture and a little bit of me coming in those songs as well now as far as you goes uh you did mention that this song you've had it for a few years now um so i'm curious what the song initially sounded like when you first uh, sat down with natanya and jack and started writing this track exactly the same to be honest wow <laughs> <laughs> it, it, i mean it's 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 been a demo with me for quite some time and uh, the demo sounded perfect and i didn't really need to add much except um, there's there's a small little string flourish that happens towards the end which uplifts the song to uh, after the second verse um that's something that we did very recently uh, probably 3 to 4 months back just to prep up the song for release but i haven't changed much it's pretty much like it's 99% the same demo that's been with me for the last 2 years and the fact that you've held it for 2 years like why why did you feel the time was right now and also at the same time like what what made you like be so sure that this song was the song to release um yeah that's that's an interesting question <laughs> um well to begin with um in in india i'm known to sing a lot of love songs and ballads and um uh, when i started my english music i wanted to offer something really really different and i wanted my fans to see a very different side to me that they had never seen and um which is why i consciously didn't do a love song or a ballad right at the onset um i put out like 3 to 4 tracks which are up tempo little pop and um you know had that little electro sound happening and then i thought that you know it's good to do something that people really really know me for and um you know uh come back home a little bit um in in terms of genre and just give them something that i feel i also wanted to do a ballad in english for a very very long time but i wanted to hold on to it i didn't want to do it so soon um yeah and i feel like it's just the the kind of climate that we are right now the world is going through such you know dark times I just wanted the song to be a really warm hug and uh you know just something that gives people comfort in these times. When you talk about jumping into like English music and writing in English for the very first time and collaborating with these songwriters and artists for the very first time, there's a yeah. sense of vulnerability that that you probably didn't experience during your Bollywood music. Um oh, sure. how were you able to be so comfortable during that time and you know what helped you be okay to like step out of this like uh, step out of your world and step into this new like world uh one part of me felt really comfortable because this is something that I've I've always wanted to do um so when I was in the studio I felt like wow I'm home and uh the second part of me second side to me was like okay this is such a new experience um in india we kind of song write in a very different way um there's a uh, a composer who composes a melody and once that's been composed um a writer writes lyrics to it um to the meter of the song and then i come in and do my vocals and then we release it and obviously the pr- producer does his stuff on it um but when i was doing these writing sessions in la the songwriters were in the same room um the producer was in the same room <laughs> um and you know the producer was also playing the guitars i was doing my guitars myself as well and everything was happening together in one room and the song was being created together so this was the the only thing that i felt was really really different in in the approach 
um, in in the industries that I've worked in. Uh, but I, I feel at the end of the day, in both those rooms, be it the Bollywood room or or the English pop room, um, I feel uh, the goal is to get a really good song, a hit song, and something that people can remember. Um, pretty much, I, I felt really comfortable. It's only uh, you know, sometimes I felt vulnerable because I've not been in this atmosphere before. And, um, you know, I've I've always recorded myself alone. Um, I've never had anyone else record me. So a lot of times these producers used to cut my vocals and I was uh, super like, I was like, OK, I, I know how to do this myself, but I've never given the control to someone else. So, um, you know, there were those times, but now I'm, I'm super, uh, you know, used to and habituated to the process uh, obviously i've been doing zoom sessions now for writing because of the i've not been doing any in person ones uh, but yeah I'm, I'm really comfortable doing a lot of uh, stuff on my own it's just the kind of artist i am i'm pretty hands on with my music um be it the guitars or the arrangements or just the vocal production i kind of handle all of that myself so yeah it was a little vulnerable for me to be in that room and give give up control and let people really guide me to do it but it was cool I, I i think it's as an artist when you are put into situations which are not the usual uh places you'd be i think it just changes you and grows you in in ways that you can never imagine for you what was it about uh natanya and jack that you still have them there you're still collaborating with them every time you have a session so like what really uh, what was that chemistry like the initial time? And like, what was it about that chemistry that made you want to continue to have that? Um, I think it all boils down to the humans they are. I think for me, that's so important. Um, obviously, I love working with musicians who are uh, at the top of their game and they know what they're doing and they're just impeccable musicians. Um, but they're, if they're not really good human beings, for me, that's that's a big turn off. And I'm, I, I can't collaborate and work with people who are not on the same wavelength as me. With Natanya and Jack and the writers that I've been working with and producers I've been working with on the past records, they've all been such a support to me um, as an artist. Even though I have an established career in India, uh, there are a lot of things that I want to know about uh, the Western music industry and stuff that I, um, you know, I'm jumping right into and I'm pretty much um, you know, going in there, it's like uncharted territory for me. This is the first time I'm doing something like this. So um, apart from just writing the songs or producing it, it's the kind of comfort level and, uh, you know, the love that we all share together that that really, you know, brings the best out of me. And I feel that is very essential, especially when I'm building my team out and uh, the kind of like the core team that really works with me and does songwriting with me. So essentially, I think with Natanya and Jack, uh, there was a really amazing comfort level. And even on the production side, I mean, um, you know, Jack produced the song and he sent stuff over to me. And uh, he was like, you know, you do your thing and you, you you put your layers on and whatever you envision for the song. And I think I love that process. I love how, you know, it's all home. So, yeah, that's that's how it is for me. And at the same time, like picking other artists uh, that you want to collaborate uh, with, for example, with the song Echo, which is another track that I love. Um, you know, what was it about these artists, Eric Nam and Kashmir, that you were like, I want to collaborate with them? Like, what really drew your attention to them? So not a lot of people know this, but I love EDM. And um, Kashmir is one of my favorite artists um, of all time. And uh, I was in LA and um, he is, um, his, um, his grandfather is from India. So he has Indian roots. So we connected on more more levels than just music. And we were hanging out and he played me an idea of of Echo in his studio and I immediately jumped at the idea of doing something within a, with him and I just um, sang my verse and that was that and I came back and then happened and um, while all, all my singles were being released um, on social media, I kind of like, you know, sparked a friendship with Eric. Um, we, we, we met, we've never met in real life. I've just met Kashmir, but I've not met Eric ever. And uh, we exchanged a few tweets and we liked each other's music and uh, it just kind of started there. And I had this echo idea with me and I sent it to Eric just for fun. I was like, you know, dude, I have this idea. Um, we, I, I've written like a rough second verse that I'm not super happy with. But um, if, you, if you're down, I, I would love for you to jump on the second verse. And he heard it and he loved the song. 
Um, so honestly, this is not something that I kind of like set out to do. It just happened. And sometimes, uh, you know, beautiful things like these just happen out of nowhere. And yeah, I mean, it just started as an internet friendship with Eric and just me sending this uh, over to him and his team for them to hear and what they feel about it. And here we are, we have a song together. Um, and it's three Asian dudes from three different countries coming together. It was a big cultural moment as well. Um, never has a, a collaboration of this sort ever happened, um, you know, where uh, there's a singer from India, a singer from Korea, there's a producer from from the US, and um, all of them, you know, uh, are Asian. And it's just, it was a big moment because we released it um, uh, during the AAP, AAPI month. So um, it was a huge deal, just not only from a musical standpoint, but from a cultural standpoint. So it's pretty cool, you know, just getting into that collaboration. And for me, doing something in the pop EDM space was something that I really wanted to do. And I'm so glad it happened with those uh, artists. What would you say that you learned from that session with them, even though it wasn't, it was pretty much virtually throughout the entire yeah. time? Um, I think the one thing that I really learned uh, during that whole time was persistence and patience. Honestly, it took eight to nine months for all of us to come together. Uh, there were moments of frustration because, um, you know, some of us felt like we wanted to release the song and, uh, you know, uh, Kashmir was like, okay, I, I don't think now is the right time. I think we should do it sometime later. And then it just got, you know, it, it, it was pushed back and forth, just like the lyric says, back and forth. And just one there was this one time where we were like, you know, let's get it out. You know, let's not wait. And uh, it's just, you know, as artists, we really want, when we have songs that we really love, especially, um, you know, Echo and, and even you, uh, I've been waiting on them. I honestly listen to them all night and sleep. <laughs> and I'm like, I just, I just want to wake up and uh, just have a day where the song is out in the world. So, um yeah, as artists, we just, we just, uh, I learned to be more patient and persistent with, with that project in particular, because it was happening over three time zones. Um, you know, Kashmir was in LA and Eric was in Korea and I was in India and we were coordinating our times between our teams and getting vocals and music sorted. And then doing a video when it was, honestly, I finished my video for Echo and uh, the second wave hit in India. So it, I think it was just divine timing that the way it happened and uh, it was just patience because we started the conversation in 2020, we released the song in 2021 and uh, yeah, I, I mean, as I learned a lot as an artist and I also learned how it's um, anything is possible if you just put your heart to it, you know. Um, I really lost hope for a second there when I was like, okay, we have everyone's vocals in, we have the song that's ready to go, but this it's not moving forward. Why, why is it not happening? Why is it not releasing? And um, I, I think as an artist, I learned so much during the whole process. Now, earlier you mentioned that you try and sprinkle a little bit of your Bollywood or your, your Indian uh, culture yeah. into your English music. Do you find yourself now kind of considering to do the same with sprinkling a little bit of your English music to your Bollywood music? Oh, totally. And uh, that's, that's so cool that you asked me that. Oh, that's such cool questions, man. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Man. Uh, uh, <laughs> honestly, um, I'm I'm trying to introduce a really global sound even in the Indian music space. Um, and now that I've been doing English music and international music, I want to get that aspect into my Hindi songs and my regional songs as well. And um, not only in my in the way I sing, but also in in the production styles. So that, you know, even if even if it is in Hindi, it should just sound like an international song that anyone uh, in the world can listen to. So, yeah, I am definitely trying that. And I hope that uh, it fuses in the right way. Uh, it, it shouldn't feel forced. I think whenever it's forced, it doesn't sound right. And uh, I'm, I'm just making sure that whenever that synergy ha happens, it happens really, really smoothly. I like that. I, I, it could be a new... Uh... Because I, I feel like, you know, music doesn't really need uh, a language. I feel like just listening to the music, understanding like the the sounds and the styles, I feel like that's more than enough. Um, it, it takes you into this new world. It makes you feel a feeling. So For sure. I mean, it, like it, songs like Despacito and, and Korean songs, um, they're yeah. dropping the traps and people. Mm. I, I don't understand the lyrics, but um, I love the songs. It's, it's the it's music. Still in that your head. 
Yeah. <laughs> so in saying that, would you say um, that you are focusing on this international, if you were to do an album right now, you're focusing more on an international kind of sound style of album, or do you still think you want to try and focus on writing a full English album? Um, I would say I would I would write a full English album. Um, for me, a lot of people think because I come from India that I would present a, a sound that is probably a fusion between the East and the West, um, which might be cool to do. But um, I, I, I've seen a lot of artists try that and it's not kind of worked. Um, and for me personally, that's not the kind of sound I'm going for. Um, the song, the songs that I put out so far, Control, uh, Next to Me, How Many Echo, and even You, they all feel really me. And uh, I wouldn't want to change from that. What I would do is add small little sprinkles of my Indianness in it. And that's what will make it unique. Um, there was a song called How Many. I don't know if you've heard that, but um, it's got Indian percussions behind uh, with a really cool, um, you know, hip hop R and B beat happening, and um, those are things that I really want to try. And even in control, there was this line called "Anymore." So it's got a very Indian kind of like vocal uh, thing happening, and those are small little things that I want to introduce and just um, for for the global listener to listen and be like, "Okay, wow, that sounded that that's unique. I I've not heard something like that before." So uh, while also relating to them with the lyrics and with the sound that they probably are familiar with and they jam to. So, yeah, that's the kind of sound I'm going for. And it's a sound that I um, really relate to, especially the stuff that I put out so far. That is totally me. And that's what I'm going to continue doing. And um, hopefully, you know, just do different kinds of genres. For me, I don't want to slot myself in just one thing and have... A lot of artists kind of limit themselves. I feel that's just my personal uh, perspective on it that, you know, people have their own sound, um, you know, like this is my sound and I'm going to stick to that and do stuff in that sound. For me as an artist, I've never believed in that because I've sung in so many languages and so many genres. For me as an artist, I want to be left free to do whatever I want. Um, I, I think the perfect example uh, or inspiration for that would be Ed Sheeran. I mean, he could he could do a perfect and and still do a bad habit and a shape of you and you know they both coexist in the same universe so um that's that's probably the kind of space i am and i want to be left alone and free and to do my thing and i i don't want to be slotted in one kind of sound i do have to say i would love to hear uh you execute that indian run in the english music a lot i i love those runs in in, in indian music i don't listen to bollywood like yeah. consistently but when i do like that's one of my favorite things like that run is just if we can hear it out here like i think it'll blow the waters with the music industry i'm, I'm pushing it man i'm pushing it <laughs> I hope it <laughs> awesome well lastly to close us off um since you are you recently dropped you uh i'm curious like what is your favorite moment that you experienced during the the creative process of this track um i think you know, a lot of times, as especially uh, as artists, we um, and and some someone like me who's really involved in the music, I really get into the song and I'm like, okay, I want to change the production here. I want to change uh, the instrumentation here. When I heard the first draft of you, what Jack had produced and sent to me, and I was like, dude, I'm I'm not going to change a thing. This is it for me. And uh, for the first time in my life, I've really not altered quite a few things like a, a lot of times you know producers send me drafts and I'm like okay I want to change the chords here and I, I want to change how it sounds here and can we have a drop beat here and whatever I, I give those kind of inputs but this time uh, what when Jack sent me the song it was so it was so bare and so uh, I think beautifully underproduced and I, I think it just works for the song um I was like, I, I don't want to do anything. It's just, it's it's super vocal-led and guitar-led. And uh, the songwriting really shines here. So that's the kind of song it is. And I don't want to do anything that will take the attention away from it. Um, I love being part of that process where I didn't have much to add. But I still, uh, you know, I was, I was super happy doing my own thing uh, on it. Um, I think it's just a beautiful song to pick up a guitar and just sing. It's that easy. It's that accessible. 
um you know my other songs i have to think okay i need to get these instruments on board and perform live in this this way i'm going to play some of my tracks in this way uh but with this song it's it's literally like okay just hand me your guitar and i'll sing the whole song for you so uh i love that about i love that about the song and um i love shooting the music video that's something that i um i really really was looking forward to because when i heard the song um, you know in its entirety i was like it has to have a really really cool video and a really aesthetic video and um i, I my my initial plan was not to do uh, the video in paris it was because there was you know so many travel restrictions and stuff i was planning to do it in india uh but i happened to travel to paris for uh for a show for a private show and i was like okay i'm here and it's the city of love and this is a love song <laughs> let's do it so i i kind of like just rounded up my team and i said you know let's make this happen guys and within 48 hours we put put a team together and we shot this video and uh, here we are the song and the video out there amazing man well i i see this song growing faster and faster in the charts and i'm i'm looking forward to more music from you and you know hopefully uh, more american fans get to know who you are as an artist as well so uh congratulations with the release of you and uh, thank you again so much for taking the time to talk to me thank you rob uh, it was a pleasure talking to you i hope uh, my music reaches to all the right people and yeah it's just the beginning i can't wait to put out more music <laughs>